My name's Gershwin, good to see you and you're watching Mallow TV. Have you been suffering with back pain that has made your life unbearable and unpleasant most of the times? Well, we now introduce you to neurosurgeon Dr. Adrian Liebenberg, based right here at Mallow Med Belleville. Dr. Adrian Liebenberg, thank you so much for joining us on Mallow TV. Great to have you with us. Let's look at yourself. You're a very interesting person. I read your resume itself in its own was impressive. Grew up in Johannesburg, in the Eastern Cape, Alice. Tell me more about you. Thank you, Gershwin, for having me. Um, yeah, I did my secondary schooling in East London, and then my primary medical training in university was Stellenbosch and at Tigerberg Hospital. I spent a, the first half of my internship at Tigerberg and the second half in the UK, and then came back into residency with neurosurgery. I completed that and then I had a, an urge to broaden my horizons, to have further teaching and, and learn how other people in the world, especially in the first world, did neurosurgery. And I was fortunate enough to get a position at Hurstwood Park in Sussex, in the UK where I worked as a clinical fellow for just close to five years, uh, through all the different departments and with lots of different specialists. And that really drove my passion for patient education, patient care. I broadened my surgical horizons and also taught me to publish and gave me love for publishing. Why neurosurgery? Yeah, you see, I don't really know. When, when, when I was, uh, was a trauma doctor at Tigerberg, the, the neurosurgeons were godly to me. And I used to not call them the first names, I used to call them doctor. And uh, at one stage, one of the senior residents came to me and said, you know, that they'd been watching me and they thought I showed lots of promise. And I was scared at first, but, you know, the fact that I was actually seen and that I had the potential to do it uh, drove me. And it was difficult at first, but, but I, I grew to love it. You practice at Melamed Belleville. Tell me about your, your time here at the hospital. Yeah. It is one of the friendliest hospitals. You can get the staff really care. I think we have one of the most efficient theatre complexes. Um, our patient population is a wide range from poor to medium to rich people. And what I like about this is that we have a family feeling. And uh, so it's, it's, it's been very good. I've been here since 2009. And um, so far, very, very good. Dr. Liebenberg, when patients come and see you, is there like a fear or, or doubt before they come and see you? No, most definitely, Gershwin, is, is that I think spinal pathology and the management of, of spinal pathology has a fairly bad name in society. And it's a combination of factors. Uh, there might be some patients that have had suboptimal management, but mostly it's because it's a progressive disease. So what people don't understand is that if you genetically you have a weak back, with time, more than one section of the spine will be involved. So they have this idea that if you've had a spinal procedure, you're fixed. Well, it's not true, that section has been fixed. And there will be further wear and tear throughout life, which means that you might need further procedures. And I think that's also, that also comes back to patient education. So they're all scared. And the biggest fear is that they might need an operation. And there's a different way of doing it. In our practice, we don't brace patients. We don't keep them in bed for weeks. They're up and mobile immediately. And once you explain to them that there's a more modern way of looking at things that you can most likely, 80% chance of having purely a pain procedure. And even if you did have surgery, that you would be up and about the same day mobilizing. And you know, we have a 98% success rate for most of our surgeries. Um, so modern spinal surgery is something that, that works really well. Um, and if you educate the patient about the pathology, usually they don't need surgery. And in the extreme cases where they need surgery, once you, you spend time with them and they become comfortable, they do well. But yes, they are scared. What advice would you have for patients? I think the, the important thing about uh, spinal biomechanics is that people don't know how to look after their spines. So for the greater part, I would want them to go and educate themselves. I mean, they can have a look at my website, there's several of my, my books for patients, the, the chapters are free, they can download them. There's lots of wonderful resources like Spine Universe is a good website. Um, go and read up and, and educate yourself about what you can do with your spine. And carrying weight isn't a good idea and I 
struggled with my weight all my life. Um, so I understand that. But what is even worse is having weak muscles. And it's interesting with spinal patients, with people with back pain, that literature teaches us that following a walking program, program, walking for an hour a day, every day, has huge benefits. So if you look at the way that you, you treat your spine, how you lift things, how you bend, how you get out of a car seat, you know, how you get into a bath, into a shower, uh, and combine that with, with mild exercise on a frequent basis, most patients will be able to look after them, their spines themselves, which is really what we want. Um, we don't specifically want to operate on people. Just tell me about theatre day. I can only imagine that theatre day must be really exciting for you. It is exciting. It, it's also very tough because you're working with people's lives and you have a very huge responsibility and the responsibility rests only on your shoulder. What the anaesthetist does or the system does or the scrub system or the floor nurse, all of that comes back to you. So there, there's a lot of enjoyment and gratification doing an operation properly, um, but you are nervous all the way through. I once asked one of the, the most senior neurosurgeons in the world who wrote a foreword to one of my books and I said, you know, I'm scared every time I operate when I was much more junior. And he said, you know, I'm 73, I'm going to retire soon. I'm still scared. I said, keep that, it's good. And, and I've always stuck to that. So I'm not scared anymore, but I'm anxious and nervous um, that I don't miss anything and I do the best I can because it's a human being unconscious under your hands and you're responsible for their care and it's the highest calling and one must you know step up to the plate when it's required. As a neurosurgeon and you said it's all about a lifelong commitment you marry that patient what excites you about your job and your patients? Yeah it's interesting is that um, I would frequently in theatre say I love my job, I love my job, and I love my job in a sarcastic manner because I don't specifically love my job. It's a very, very tough job. Um, there's, there's, it's it's the, the risk, it's the hours involved, and it's dealing with people. Uh, anybody who works with the public know that they are frequently inherently ungrateful and they have preconceived ideas and to win that over and make them your friend and a family member which is the end result and is very gratifying is onerous and it's, it's a difficult task so when you go home at night you are completely drained um, not just physically but emotionally as well you know to spend 10 or 12 hours in theatre standing behind a theatre table uh, then attend to patients and there are always complications usually small complications and it's more a case of a patient having a certain expectation uh, rather than the reality that you have to manage emotionally and say, well, yes, I know you had paralysis in the left leg and we did say it would get better, uh, but not today, perhaps tomorrow or the day after, and then working through that. So I get up with joy most mornings. I don't have joy all day long, but the, the end result is when, when you get a letter from the patient or sometimes they bake me cookies or they bring me a bottle of wine or whatever. Um, and the gratuity that, and, and, and how happy they are. And um, I, I'm not a very tactile person. They always want to hug me. It's always very uncomfortable. And then I try and hug them back and, and get them out of the consulting room with a smile. Um, so, so they're true family members, but it's a drive. Uh, it's a passion, but it's not always a joy because it is tough. Got to ask you, when will someone come and see you to have spinal surgery and neck surgery? It's interesting that uh, that that's such a huge, uh, broad uh, question to answer. 80% um, of the patients we treat in our practice, we treat without surgery. The, the drive in all cases would be that surgery is the last resort. Well, that's a fine balancing act because a medical practice is a business. And I think many surgeons across the world try and super select the patients that require surgery because that is the income driver. Unfortunately, that places the rest of the patients that have mild or moderate pathology in a hiatus where they have nowhere to go because the return to the GP no longer has 
any care that they can offer because the, the patient's pathology has exceeded their care and they don't have the pathology that requires surgery and therefore the, the surgeon doesn't want to attain to them. And I feel differently about that. I feel that uh, all the treatment modalities that a spinal patient requires should be offered by the specialist. If it's a biokinetic therapy, it's biokinetic therapy. If it's a pain procedure, it's a pain procedure. If it's a complicated spinal fusion with rods and screws, then that's what it is. So, so patients who come and see me frequently are saying to me, who come and see me far too late. They come and see me at the point where they require surgery. And we really want to see them earlier. Um, the, the two things that we see the most, and it, it, it's a genetic trait in our country, is, is mechanical neck pain and mechanical back pain. And, and I've made a whole YouTube uh, series about that as well on social media to try and educate people. And, and that purely, it says what it is, it's the, the mechanics of movement causing pain. So that's usually a disc in the spine, you know, which are the shock absorbers or the joints that either have damage or inflammation in them. And they then cause pain with referred pain. So anybody who has either back pain or neck pain uh, associated headaches or pelvic pain or arm pain or leg pain should really see a specialist because we are the keepers of the, of the MRI scan. And the problem is that in most cases an x-ray won't demonstrate the pathology. So in, in South Africa a GP can only order an x-ray. So the only way to ascertain what the diagnosis is, what's wrong with you, is to have an MRI scan. And then you can explore the options of the treatment. Um, which in our practice, most of the case is conservative, and in very few cases it's surgery. Dr. Liebenberg, uh, quite interesting, you can't miss it in your room, it's um, your 16 publications. How did that all start, and especially uh, the brain surgeon's diet? I guess, yeah, thanks. I was worried you can ask me about that. Um, I started with, with publications in, in the UK while I was training there, uh, writing textbooks for neurosurgery residents and, and trainees. And that developed into trying to educate my patients and writing books for them. At more basic level, I wrote textbooks for GPs and neurosurgery as well. And uh, I also did write the diet book, which, which was a penance, really. And, and I fluctuate, you know, people say, well, you're slightly bigger now, you're slightly smaller. And I will fluctuate all my life. I mean, I always struggle with my weight. Um, but I'd, I'd lost a huge amount of weight, about 70 kilograms. and. The, the nursing staff. That's just, uh, I'm 2K is more than that. Yeah, exactly, I lost you. And uh, um, the nursing staff kept on bothering me and the patients kept on asking questions. So I wrote a little handout and that just basically evolved into a book. And eventually it was so successful that, that Penguin budgeted me until I gave it over to them. And uh, it continues to be a penance because uh, I think if you found one of the answers or all the answer, how to, to turn into a healthier trimmer you, you kind of you have to help the other fat people so my colleagues all think it's very funny and I get teased about it a lot and I don't care. Dr. Liebenberg, thank you for your time, thank you for introducing yourself and also I'm sure you've uh, inspired so many people and patients uh, right here on Matter TV. Thank you, Gershwin. We trust you gained valuable information received from neurosurgeon Dr. Adrian Liebenberg. If you'd like to make a booking or make an appointment with Dr. Liebenberg, the contact details are on your screen. From all of us at Mallow TV, thank you for watching, liking and sharing our video. Until next time, goodbye.